Good morning everyone. This is Cape Carnivores coming to you live from the town of Malmesbury. We're in some really fascinating shale over in Nostadfelt. And in it, we have quite a few interesting little sundews and orchids which I'll show you temporarily. Today is going to be quite a good trip, exploring a lot of the Swatland. And hopefully there will be lots of sundews. Stay tuned. So to start it off, we have this here little sundew hybrid as it's done flowering. It has a pretty interesting red flower. I've not seen it in flower myself yet. I've always had bad luck, either closed or done. But pretty small, fairly dry growing, little spindly leaves and a little red flower. I'll see if I can find one that's partially open so you can get a better idea of what the petals look like. So here we have one that's in flower. Um, it should be open in a little while. They're very responsive to sunlight for opening and closing. Let's see if we can get nice and focus. There we go. So the sun is starting to come out now, starting to warm up on a cloudy day. They will not open, so as you can see here, very nice and bright. And they're in this very sort of dense shrubland, I guess you could call it. So they live in these little open patches between the grasses, the restios, which are these sort of thicker, well not thicker, thinner, little thick bushes. Lot, sometimes proteas or some other lovely little flowers. You can see are quite a diverse and green habitat. It is winter time. It's looking at its best. So really, really nice. Let's see what else we can find. So just a few meters away, we have some really lovely bonnet orchids. These are Pterygodium alatum, the winged bonnet. And these are a fascinating group as they're pollinated by oil collecting bees. So instead of producing nectar, they produce a lovely oil that the bees in the genus Red Aviva come and collect and dig underground to give to their larvae when they make a pollen bundle, neck oil bundle, drop it for the larvae, etc. And therefore they ensure they have a specialized pollinator that works specifically for them. So Here we have a lovely indigenous plant called Siphia. It's a climber, so as you can see it's on this little bush with the actual plant that's flowers on tendrils curled around the upper growth. Really, really interesting. I don't know what family this is in or much about it, but I see them quite a lot and they have these very nice long white flowers. So now we find ourselves near Darling on the west coast of South Africa at some of the remaining Cape Vernal pools. These are very shallow seasonal pools, about 10 centimeters or 4 inches deep at most. They form in wintertime when we get the majority of our rain in the Cape. And summer they dry out completely. There's a lot of unique plants and there's a lot of Drosaurus to flora in this area. So let's see if we can go find some. So here we have them. It didn't take long to find. Some amazing and beautiful Drosera sister flora. Don't mind the plane going by. Busy, busy making noise. But these are very large flowered sundews. Some of the ones in the area get to almost eight centimeters in diameter. The biggest I've seen was three inches, seven and a half centimeters. They're big, tall, long plants. You can see there they've got a very long stem. They usually have a basil rosette. But some of them lose them very early in the season, scent favoring these very large, strong stems with upright leaves. So you can see those leaves coming off from the stem and produce several large flowers right on top. And really incredible. This is a white flowered one. There are pink flowers in the area and some purplish as well. See some nice ones there in the sun. Really, really incredible. So when I said they're big flowers, I meant it. This is next to my relatively large hand for scale. These are enormous and they have these big dark centered flowers. This is actually what we'd consider a light center as far as Sister Flora goes. Some have very, very dark centers of the plant that probably plays a role, plays a role in attracting the beetle pollinators. These are all pollinated by monkey beetles and a lot of the different Sister Flora colors have a different beetle that pollinates them. So here we can see a bit more of what the basil rosettes look like. This is one that's starting to make a stem. It's probably a younger plant that just came out very late. It has this big rosette of leaves at the bottom and a lot of them lose them in favor of this very much taller growth as they get bigger. 
But in the shade here, we can see some much smaller plants, some young ones. These are probably at least a year old already. The seedlings are really minuscule. So this is a nice look of the vernal pool a bit further away from the sun use. All the pink spikes in there are Wimbea recurva. A different Wimbea. I'll find the right species. These very tall spike lilies. And right in front, we have little Poridias, Cape Stars, part of the Iridaceae. Last I checked. Super, no, the Hypoxidae. Super cool plants. Crazy big vernal pools. I need to be on the other side, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Just a few more amazing flowers here. Just, I mean, they're massive. Look at them. There's a lot of floriferous beetles around that nibble on the petals and grasshoppers that eat the ovaries and so on. So Sundays aren't a, devoid of predation. You'd think, you know, a plant that eats bugs won't have problematic bugs. But I found plenty of ovaries eaten, flowers eaten off, petals just nibble to shreds. Pretty fascinating if you ask me. And here is the one bulb to rule them all, Geyseraisa radiance. People go absolutely mad for these and I can see why. It's big, purple, red, beautiful. Nice to actually see some open for a change. So here we have Drosera pulsiflora. This is a pretty clonal form, as you can see by the absolute mat of it. As I mentioned earlier, predation does strike. This is a flower stem that's been nibbled off. We've got a few that do have flowers around here. They're not quite open, I'm not sure why. They might just open later in the day, or mostly be done. And there's a little patch of weird ones without petals at all, really. These have been mentioned to me before, but it's fascinating seeing them in person. Since they're clonal, this whole patch probably makes funky flowers. And they're sitting just here, close to the waterline. But it's nice and damp. I mean, they're just massive, they're beautiful. If we get a close-up at the plants, they have these very big, broad leaves and long, long snap tentacles at the end of their leaves. Just to show you how many sister flora there are, all these big white bits are sister flora flowers here by the vernal pool. On the other side as well, a few parts of flora sticking out here and there. You get out of here because pesticide is busy floating downstream to me and I'm not particularly fond of that. See you at the next spot. So here, at what might be my last spot for the, the day, we have the Holy Grail. Red flower Drosera sister flora. So right now I'm in a Strandfeld biome. It's very sandy, resting nice here. It translates to beach field. So we're very close to the coast. In a sandy habitat, not really plain moss. Then we have this just ludicrously nice Drosera sister flora. Let's see if we can find more. So here's another Drosera sister flora with the pollinator, the green monkey beetles. I think these two are busy trying to get it on in the flowers. Typical monkey beetle business. They get pretty sourced. And they're flying around all these little red flowers, transferring pollen. So here we have some Drosera atrostyla. It's a parcel flora type. Lovely white flowers and busy being eaten alive by horseflies. They have little thin leaves. Here we have the famous Boaz from Fierce Flora, his face we cannot see of shadow. He is also snapping with us. We have Alex Dietrich out there in the distance, the resident expert. These are really nice, also in sandy soil. If we want to have a proper look at the biome, it's very, very sandy, very full of restio. So this isn't Fainwas, it doesn't have the all the main groups. Sorry for the shakes, my horse flies are awful. They're sort of sitting on the edge of this little flood pan here on the farm we're visiting. And that is all for today. Thank you guys for joining along, and we'll see you on the next one.